All right. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and this is the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 34. And today, we're, this is the one about the Independent Interpretive Jeet Kune Do Instructors Association. All right. Okay, it's a joke. <laughs> it's uh, it's um, somebody called this my uh, my Gemini humor. There is no such organization, uh, and no, I'm not going to be forming any such organization. At least, not something with um, not something with a name like like that, right? Um, but I have said before that one of my one of my hopes is to one day host uh, probably during the winter or the spring here in Miami, um, some kind of a, a, an instructor's conference uh, where the emphasis will be on the display of and the ex examination of and then collaboration on the different uh, training methods or the different approaches that, that different Jeet Kune Do instructors use, right? Um, it, it, the, reason, the reason why this came up is because um, you know, a lot of times the topics that I choose for discussion on the broadcast, I've, as I've told you before, they result from something that may have happened during the week or what have you. And so one of the things that happened um, during the past week was uh, a return to the discussion of whether or not there's such a thing as different interpretations of, of Jeet Kune Do, right? And um, so I'm not 100% sure that, that that is a real thing, that there really is or that there can be so-called different interpretations of Jeet Kune Do. But from what I've seen, from what I've heard, from what I've experienced, there are definitely different approaches um, used in putting out the, the, Jeet Kune Do, the Jeet Kune Do knowledge, right? So, for example, there are some whose, um, their approach is 100% empty hands Jeet Kune Do with like zero weapons, right? Then there are those whose weapons approach is what we would call Filipino Kali. Then there are those um, for whom their weapons approach is a little bit more contemporarily oriented. So they, they, they include firearms, right? If we go back to empty hands, there are some whose focus on empty hands does not include trapping or grappling, right? Um, then there are some who might include the trapping, but not the grappling, or or at best um, rudimentary, let's call it, right? Um, uh, gra grappling. And then when it comes to the grappling, there are those whose focus is more on, uh, let's call it classical or, or traditional, like Japanese jujitsu, let's say right, or stand in grappling. Th then there are some who have gone deeply into uh, Penjak Silat, for example, while some have gone deeply into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. In fact, there are some people that you might actually have to refer to them as former Jeet Kune Do um, because of the extent, because of the, the, the degree to which they have gone into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu so that it might appear as if they've given up all of their previous uh, Jeet Kune Do training, right? So, so we have all those approaches, right? So then, of course, the question comes up, which approach is best, right? And I've talked about this before. What the heck is best, right? There, for me, there's, there's no answer to that question about best or, or what have you. Um, from the pers perspective of a student, somebody who is looking for instruction in Jeet Kune Do, right? And then again, from the perspective of an instructor, somebody who provides um, the, 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 the teaching in Jeet Kune Do, it still comes down to personal preference, right? So different people are going to use different approaches and everybody's gonna have a valid rationale for why they do what they do and the manner in which they do it, right? So, you you know, in, in the JKD world, you have some you have some who are guided by. Um, you'll hear the expression, "Well, this is what I got from Bruce," right? So some take what they got from Bruce, and and they, they and that's it. That's all. That's all they do. That's all they teach, right? That's what they're um, dedicated to. 
Then there are some who take what they got from Bruce and they use that as a springboard and they go beyond what they got from Bruce. All right. But then I think that there's a not so vocal and maybe therefore not so well known group that takes what they got from the people who got it from Bruce and then they apply the approach of analysis and research and development right into what it is that they put out as in instructors right so since they didn't get it directly from Bruce and instead they got it from one of his originals let's call it right then they make use of the original Bruce Lee material that's out there. So the, the Tao, a Jeet Kune Do, um, anything in the, um, the John Little library, you know, the stuff that I, I refer to. I, I'm, not gonna, I, I'm not gonna have um, any uh, source material for uh, today, so I'm probably not gonna flash a book or something um, at, at you guys. Oh, in terms of flashing, I should flash the uh, today's um, today's t-shirt okay cool All right um, so so they didn't get it directly from Bruce Lee so you take the, the materials that are available for everybody out there and then you blend the ideas and the principles and the concepts and the teachings from the different sources and that's how you as an instructor can come up because it's difficult for a student to do that Right? That's why it's important for in, uh, us instructors, or all, all the instructors who um, you know, w listen, listen to, to, to the, the, the broadcast, and then um, those who, you know, and, and to me it's important that we, that we continue to put the knowledge of the different uh, Jeet Kune Do instructors out there. So that's why I have the, um, the other um, Facebook show, which is the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. And so I've been promising Ron Kosakowski for, for a while, and I think we're, we're, we're finally going to be able to um, get it together. Um, his son Jesse has been dealing with an injury and what have you. So I think tomorrow, um, maybe around this same time, 3 p.m., uh, you guys can come back to Facebook and, and I'll do a dialogue with uh, Ron and Jesse James uh, Kosakowski. Right? Um, so let's get back to what we're talking about. So um, you, you, you train with a Bruce Lee original. And then you take all of the original Bruce Lee material that's available and you blend that with what you get from the, the original. So now you are essentially also getting it from Bruce, so to speak, even if not directly, right? So if I train with somebody whose JKD approach is kicking and punching only, right? So there's no trapping, there's no grappling. And they tell me that the reason, their rationale for that is that the, the time that they spent with Bruce Lee, Bruce was moving away from the trapping and grappling, right? Then I'm gonna accept that. But if, as a student, maybe, but even as an instructor, if m the research or, or the, um, the result of my research into my own experience has shown that trapping is valid for me, then I'm still going to work on my trapping, right? Now, j just because the trapping, uh, let's say it, it, it comes primarily from, from the Wing Chun, I'm not necessarily going to go um, train in Wing Chun up to the level of black sash or, or something um, in order to extract the essence of what Wing Chun has to offer, right? Because it's important to me that what I maintain is, is Jeet Kune Do as a priority and not, not something else, right? I mean, that's kind of a, a, a touchy subject, but I think you, you understand what I mean. So I might use a more streamlined approach to, um, to, to my Wing Chun, but I want to spend time with somebody who has dedicated themselves to Wing Chun. So for example, I want to spend time with, with somebody maybe like, um, like, like Francis Fong, or or um, or um, which which the guy um, Simon Lau right or um, uh, gosh I'm trying to remember the the, uh, the, uh, the other guy Samuel Kwok right I might I might want to spend time with somebody who has devoted themselves to Wing Chun so that I can understand 
their, their rationale behind that. And then that makes it easier for me to extract the essence behind what it is that, that, they're, that they're teaching, right? Same thing with, um, with grappling. I might not find it necessary to join a, a, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu program and stay in it and train in it all the way up to, to black belt, to get my own black belt in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in order to extract its essence. Instead, I might want to discover what Wing Chun and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Pendraxila or what have you, what they possess as, um, as high points, right? I want, to, I want to understand why they've devoted themselves to this particular. So, so somebody like Jean-Jacques uh, Machado, I, I would want to spend time with him, learning from him, because he's dedicated and devoted himself to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I want to understand why, um, what are, what um, I think Eric Paulson might call the, the high percentage uh, technique, right? What that's about. So then this high percentage technique, what I'm looking for is its use as an attack and its use as a counterattack, because essentially that's all there is, right? It's you using something as an attack or you using something as a counter when somebody attacks you. That's the essence of, of, of self-defense. So I train with them in order to absorb what is useful, right? And, 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 and then same thing with Muay Thai, right? You spend time with somebody like Ajarn Chai who has devoted himself to the art of Thai boxing because you want to you want to jump into it you want to uh, you want to deep dive into it and then bring yourself out right um, so if if I discover for example that Penjak Sila uh, or a particular a particular um, Penjak Sila method puts a, a priority on off balancing the opponent then I might see how when I'm in the clinch in Muay Thai how off balancing the opponent plays a role. So then I'm, I'm extracting essence and I'm seeing how if there's a, an application of a Penjak Silak principle when I'm in the plum in, in the Muay Thai, right? And to me, that's the Jeet Kune Do approach because I'm not trying to be a Penjak Silak guy necessarily. I'm not trying to be a, a Muay Thai guy necessarily. What I'm trying to see is how these things um, lend themselves to the improvement of my expertise in that particular range of fighting or that particular uh, fighting skill, right? So um, th th that way, see, <laughs> so, the, so th this, is, this is just going to be another short um, broadcast for you guys, but that way, right? You can be a little bit um, esoteric, and when people ask you about, well, what's your style, right? You can go, well, it's no style. And then when they go, well, how can it be no style? And that's when you tell them, well, it can be all styles. And then they go, well, how can it be all styles? And you go, well, that's because it can be no style, right? <laughs> and then they tell you that you're being a pain in the butt, right? <laughs> and that's when you tell them, no, what I'm actually being is the center of an undifferentiated circle with no circumference, right? <laughs> and then that really pisses them off and they stop talking to you, right? And you make no friends, okay? Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I, I just wanted to spend, you know, Independence Day was on Wednesday, so we took some time off and what have you, but I just wanted to spend a, a couple of 10, 15 minutes with you guys and uh, talk about this because it's something that's gonna come up all the time, whether or not there are different interpretations of Jeet Kune Do. I don't think it's I don't think it's interpretations as such. I think it's more personal choice, personal preference, and the way that people uh, go about things. So if your goal is to be well-rounded, you have the you have the guideline for what well-roundedness is. You know that there are only two types of martial arts. There are martial arts that deal with empty hands, and there are martial arts that deal with weaponry. If you're going to be well-rounded, you got to deal in both. When you when you um, when you look, when you take a look at empty-handed martial art, right? Well, then, wh what can you do in empty-handed martial art? You can kick, you can punch, you can trap, and you can grapple. You see, so 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 you start with like let's call it the big picture, and then you whittle down, and you keep whittling down, right? And you you have the category and the subcategory or whatever it is that you want to call it, and then you have even the sub subcategories in there. It's kind of like the IRS code, right? Um, but your your intent is to investigate everything, to work everything down so that you're applying 
the hacking away at the unessentials. That was something that um, that I that I discussed at length um, this this past week with um, a colleague who was in from uh, from Ireland, and we you know we sat down and we spoke for for a couple of hours. So I think um, um, in in the next couple of weeks for the broadcast, I think what we'll do is to take a look at at that right. Start with the big picture of what martial art training is, and then use the Jeet Kune Do. Uh, Jeet Kune Do matrix or the Jeet Kune Do template or whatever and and go from the big picture to like the first element of the big of the big picture and then start taking that first element and carving it up into its uh, component parts analyzing the heck out of all of those and then the next week moving on to a, a, another aspect of that right okay so that's it for for today thanks um to everybody who who tuned in and spent a few, a few minutes uh with me right um tomorrow maybe 3 p.m i don't have the time confirmed yet but uh, i should be talking with ron and jesse james uh, kosakowski on the jeet Kune Do dialogues uh be sure to check out i love uh, jeet Kune Do .com where you can find uh the the i love jeet Kune Do quick quick skills uh series volume one and uh that's about it this is dwight woods the jeet Kune Do rebel thanks for tuning in see you next time signing off take care